Hey everyone, it's John here. And in today's video, we're gonna take a look at how we can return all match results in Excel. So if you're using either the VLOOKUP function or the XLOOKUP function, those are only going to be able to return the first match that they find. In today's video, I'm gonna show you five ways that we can actually return all of the results in Excel. Let's take a look. Before we take a look at returning all match results, let's first take a look at returning a single match result with the XLOOKUP function. So here we've got a list of employees and their corresponding department. And what we wanna do is look up the department value and return the corresponding list of employees. So you can say, for example, that we've got multiple values for a department. And so what we wanna do is return all of those employees for that department. But with the XLOOKUP function, we're only going to be able to return the first match so in this case, it would be Sarah. So let's take a look at that. So we can use XLOOKUP to look up our department value here within our department column and return the corresponding value in the name column. And when we press enter, you can see that it returns the first match that it finds. So this is the first match and the corresponding name is Sarah, and that's what we get with XLOOKUP. Now, XLOOKUP does actually have an optional argument that allows us to return the last match. So here we've got the optional search mode argument, and there's an option in here to search last to first, and that's going to tell XLOOKUP to start at the bottom of our table and look for the first match that it finds starting at the bottom. And in this case, it's going to be this value here. And you can see that we get Kevin as a result. So whether you use VLOOKUP or XLOOKUP, it's only going to allow you to return one result. Now let's take a look at how we can get all of the matches from our table. The first method we're going to take a look at for returning multiple matches is going to be with the text join function. So in this example, we've got a list of employees and then the department that they're in. And what we want to do is return all of the employees for a given department. And so first we're actually going to use the if function to test whether an employee is in that particular department. So here we can use the if function and what we're gonna do is test the department and see if that is equal to whatever selection we have here. And if the department is equal, what we wanna return is the employee's name. And otherwise, we're just going to return an empty string. And when we press enter, we get all of the employees in the IT department in our spilled array. And here we can change this. So if we select HR, it's gonna update and return only the HR employees. Same with if we select finance, then we're just gonna get our finance employees. Now what we're gonna do is use the text join to join these into a single cell. So we're gonna create a comma separated list of employee names. And the text join function is also going to allow us to get rid of our blank values here. So here we're gonna use the text join function and the delimiter we're gonna use is a comma and a space. And the second argument for a text join function is whether we want to ignore or include empty cells. Now here we wanna get rid of those blank cells in our list of employee names. So here we're gonna select true to ignore empty cells. And then the last argument for text join is the array that we wanna join values from, and that's going to be from our if formula here. And when we press enter, then we've got our list of employees in a given department. So here we can select HR, for example, and now we've just got the HR employees in that single cell. So with the text join and if function, we're able to return multiple matches into a single comma separated list. 
Next up, we're going to return multiple matches with the group by function. So the group by function is going to allow us to summarize data, and we're going to use it to summarize the employee names by department. So the values we want to summarize by are, is the department field. And the values that we want to summarize, normally this is going to be some number field like the salary, and then you can either sum or take the average of that with the group by function. But in this case, we're going to summarize our name field. And how we're going to summarize that is with array to text. So that's going to allow us to create a comma separated list of the employees. And when we press enter, you can see that we've got a list of each of the employees in the finance department and the HR department and the IT department. Here we've also got a list of all the employees. Now we can remove that total field. So one of the arguments in the group by function is for grand totals. And so here we can choose no totals. And now we've just got our list of departments and then the corresponding employees for those departments. And now we only want to return one of these based on whatever department we have selected here. So what we're going to do is use a VLOOKUP function to look up the department and then return this corresponding list of employees. So here we're going to look for this department and we're going to look for it in the results of our group by formula. And the value we want to return is in the second column of that group by result. And we want to return an exact match. And when we press enter, we get a comma separated a list with the employees in it. And of course, this is going to be dynamic. So here we can switch this to the IT department. And now we've only got the IT employees or we select finance, now we've only got the finance employees. The next method we're going to take a look at to get multiple results is with the filter function. So this is going to be the most simple and straightforward formula method as it's going to allow us to filter our data set based on a given department. So here we can use the filter function to filter our entire data set here. And the criteria for what we want to include is going to be when the department is equal to our given department up here that we're selecting. And when we press enter, we've got all of the data for the finance employees. And here we can select whatever department we want. So here's all the HR employees data. And here's all the IT department employees data. Now, if we only want the employee's name, we can also return that. We don't have to return the entire table. So here, instead of the entire employee table, we can just select the single column of the employee name and press enter. And then we just have the employee's name. Next up, we're gonna take a look at returning multiple results using Power Query filters. So first up, what we're going to do is create a parameter for the department that we want to select. So here we're going to name this cell. So here in the name box, you can enter whatever name you want. I've just named it department and you can press enter. And then that cell is going to be referred to as department and we can import this into Power Query. So here we're going to go up to the data tab and we're going to click on from table slash range. And you can see it's brought in that department cell, but it's also promoted that value as a column header. So we want to undo that. We're just going to delete those automatic steps in our query. And now we've just got a single column with a single value in it. And here it happens to be IT because that's what we've got in our cell. And what we're going to do is right click on it 
and drill down to that value. And now we've just got the value as a scalar and we can go to the home tab and we're going to close and load this. And here we're just going to create the connection as we're going to use that value later in another power query. Let's press OK. And now we're going to import our employee data. So let's select that table, go up to the data tab and again from table slash range. And this time we've got the employee data here in Power Query now. And what we're going to do is filter on the department. So here I'm just going to select any one of these. Let's select HR and press OK. And you can see that I've just got the HR values. And what we're going to do is instead of hard coding this in the formula that it creates, let's delete that. And we're going to refer to our department query here from our named cell. and click on the check mark to accept that change. And you can see now it's filtered on the IT department. And we can close and load this query into Excel. So here we're gonna load it into a table. And let's load that table right next to our data. And so now we've got our multiple results from our IT department and we can change this. So if we want HR, then all we need to do is now right click and refresh this query. And we just got the HR values. We can also select finance. And again, we need to refresh this right click and refresh. And we've just got our finance values. Again, if we just want the employee names, we can go up to the query tab and edit this query. And here we're going to select the name column. And if I right click, we can remove the other columns and we're just left with the name column. Save that. And there we go. We just have the multiple results for our employee name. Lastly, we're going to take a look at Power Query joins for returning multiple matches. So in this scenario, we've got a table of customers and each customer has an ID. And then we've also got a table of orders and we can match the orders to the customers based on the ID column here. So for example, here, Alice, she has four orders in this data set. And what we want to do is for each customer, we want to return all of the orders for that customer. And we want to do that for each of the customers in our table here. So we can use Power Query joins in order to do that. First, we're just going to go up to the data tab and import both these tables. Click on from table slash range. And we're just going to close and load this. We're just going to create a connection to that table. And we're going to select the other table and do the exact same thing up in the data tab from table slash range. And let's close and load that as a connection as well. And then back up in the data tab, we're going to go to get data. And here we're going to go to combine queries. And so we're going to use the merge option and we're just going to select our customers table as the first table and then our orders table as the second table here. And then we just need to select the column in each of those tables that's going to connect these data sets. So here we have the common ID column and then we can select the join kind. So Default is left outer join. So that's going to give us all of the items from the first list and any matching results from our orders list here. And if we press OK, then that gets added on as another column to our customer table. And in each row, we've actually got a table of orders. So here you can see that we've got those four orders for Alice. 
And what we can do is click on this toggle up here to expand those and press OK. And now what you're going to see is we've got a few entries for Alice. And here you can see the different orders. And now we can load this back into Excel. So we're going to load it to a table. And let's load it up here. And you can see the results here. We've got Matthew in our customers table, and he actually has no orders. And so you can see that there is a blank values here. But if you take a closer look, you'll notice that we've actually got a customer ID here, number six, but there is no customer ID six in our customers table. So these orders are missing from our results. So we might want to include those. Let's go back to our query and go up to the query tab and let's edit this query. And here we're going to go back to the merge step. So that's this source step here and we can edit this. And here instead of left outer, what we're going to choose is full outer. So that's going to give us all rows from both tables. Press OK. And let's save that. And when the query refreshes, you can see we've got our Matthew customer and he's got no orders, but we've also got these two orders here from our orders table with no matching customer. So there you go. That's how you can return multiple matches in Excel based on a lookup value. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel for future Excel videos like this one. That's it for this video. We'll see you in the next one.